So what is the difference between a MAC address and an IP address? And here we've got a picture of the internet showing some servers and a computer connected via routers. And your computer connected in this way typically has both a MAC address and an IP address. And so one question is, do we really need both the MAC address and the IP address? And how are they used differently in the network? So one thing to point out is that the MAC address operates at the link layer in the protocol stack and the IP address operates at the network layer. So what does that really mean? Well, when the packet is in the network, so if you've got an application like a video stream, for example, it's being packetized, when that packet is in the network, it's using the IP address to find its way through that network. When it's on this link here, it's using the MAC address. So why is it that they use those different addresses in this way? So let's try to understand, do we actually need both the MAC address and the IP address? Well, let's take a little look at the packets and to try to uh, see the structure of the packets and where these addresses are. So if this is the data of a packet, and this is shown not to scale because the data would be a lot longer, of course, in practice, um, but here are the headers. So there's an application header, a transport co control protocol header, an IP header, and an Ethernet header. And so, for example, with a video stream, the data gets an, a header put on which contains information such as the frame rate of the video and other things to do with the video. That creates the application packet. Well, that gets encapsulated inside a transport layer packet by having a TCP header in the uh, when it's an internet packet. That then gets put inside a network layer packet. So that packet gets encapsulated inside a network where there's a header with an IP header for the internet protocol. And for this link across here from the computer to the router or to the switch and router, uh, there needs to be encapsulated inside, if it's using an ethernet connection, it's encapsulated inside an ethernet packet with an ethernet header. So where are these addresses? Where are these MAC address and IP address? Well, the IP address is inside the IP header and the, it, there's a, in there is the source address followed by the destination address inside that header there. This is the IP packet. So this is an IP address, source and destination. Inside the Ethernet packet, uh, they're in the other order, but they are the destination address followed by the source address of the MAC address. So the MAC address goes into the Ethernet header and is used over this link. The IP address goes into the IP header and is used in the internet. Again, why do we need them both? Well, Let's have a look at a bit of detail about these addresses and what they look like and their structure. So here we have a typical MAC address. This address is made up of six bytes. So I'm going to write here six bytes. And each byte is, or each component is represented in hexadecimal. So this is the numbers zero to nine and then A, B, C, D, E, F. So there's 16 possible values for each number or letter character here. Because there's 16, that represents four bits. And because there's two of them together in a byte, that means there's a total of 48 bytes. So there's, so I'll put um, six bytes, which are eight bits per byte. So that means a total of 48 bits is able to, is what represented in a MAC address. Well, that means there's two to the power 48 possible MAC addresses. And this equals uh, 281 trillion addresses. So that's a lot of addresses. And that's enough addresses for every single element, uh, computer element on the planet, 281 trillion, at least for now. Uh, and so because of this, uh, what happens is when network interface cards are manufactured and put into things like computers and so on, other devices connecting to a network. Uh, if they're going to be connecting via Ethernet, so it's a network interface card for Ethernet, then they are given a specific MAC address in the manufacturing. So each device has its own unique MAC address. And you can see that sometimes printed on the bottom of a computer, for example, uh, will be the actual MAC address for that device. 
Well, how does that compare to IP addresses? Well, in IPv4, for example, uh, this is the format of the IP address structure. So it's written in groups of uh, three with three digits each, and they're just decimal digits. So out of this, there are a possible 43, because of the, um, the way that they're constructed and so on, there's possible 4.3 billion. So 4.3 billion is a lot less than 281 trillion. So these IP addresses cannot be allocated to each individual device at manufacture. They are given out dynamically when they're needed. And uh, this has advantages and disadvantages. So some of the advantages of the MAC address is that with a MAC address, you can connect your device to any local area network, any LAN, uh, in the world. You can take your computer overseas, plug it in on an Ethernet anywhere in the world through this connection port here, and within that local area network, wherever it is, it can immediately recognize packets that are being sent from a specific MAC address, and it will recognize that as a MAC address, and it will know how to then handle it and route packets through its local area network automatically. Um, on the wider scale, it's more difficult for a MAC address. Uh, the IP addresses are actually allocated in a hierarchical way based on geography. And as I say, they're allocated when they're needed. So uh, every computer in a company, for example, uh, will be given a subnet. The, the company will be given a subnet and uh, allocate a subnet. And then all the computers below that will have a similar IP address just differentiated in the last significant places here. And so uh, through the internet, the internet finds it easier to route packets in that hierarchical way with addresses which are allocated in a hierarchical way. So that's the advantage of the IP, is the hierarchical nature. The advantage of the MAC address is that it can be plugged in anywhere and, and doesn't need to be allocated an address and can immediately start sending packets. Um, of course, uh, when you first turn on a computer or you first plug it in, uh, it has an advantage to have an address already allocated for you. That's an advantage, but not so good uh, in terms of finding its way. And, and, and for the internet, if it was based all on MAC addresses, the internet would have to store massive lookup tables for all of the routing, uh, routing tables. Whereas for the IP addresses, which are hierarchical, it can do all of that storage of the ways to do the routing in a hierarchical way, which makes it much more efficient. So these are two of the important differences between the MAC and IP. Uh, of course, we've now got IPv6. Uh, so IPv6 is a new format which opens up a lot more addresses. And with IPv6, there's a, there are 340 trillion, 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 I'll just write TTT, possible IPv6 addresses. So this is a massive number of addresses, more even, of course, than the Mac. And so now it will be possible for every single device to have its own unique IP address. So now comes the question is, well, do we still need the MAC addresses? So if we can have IP addresses, if we can allocate them in, a, in a, 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 an as-needed way, but we have so many that every single device can have its own one, uh, then do we need the MAC address for this last link? Maybe now with so many IPv6 addresses, we can have IP right from the computer to computer, right from end to end. Well, to think about that a little more, let's think about um, what would be needed for that to be come into effect. Well, the internet protocol does not actually currently specify the physical layer. So what, how the actual waveforms are sent over these links is not part of the internet protocol standard. So for example, in this link here, this link might be a coax here, a, a coaxial cable. It might also be an optical fiber. And so each one of these different possibilities will have its own protocol at the physical layer for the transmission. So when we think about this one, what are the advantages of the ethernet? Well, the ethernet does have a physical layer standard and a whole collection of standards. Uh, they can include unshielded twisted pair. They can also include optical fiber um, and a whole range in between. So the ethernet standard, one of its advantages of using ethernet over here and therefore using the MAC address, staying with the MAC address, is that this standard is well-defined and it is cheap. These devices are cheap. This, these switches here have been used for many years for local area networks. So they're both cheap 
and flexible. So this is a good physical layer standard and it's very flexible and cheap. And that's one of the main reasons why they're so popular, which is one of the reasons we still have the MAC addresses and why it's so important to have MAC addresses. So not, not only are they cheap, I mean, they can be uh, the unshielded twisted pair. I've also probably heard of RJ45 cables, of course, the most common ethernet cables. Um, so they're, they're, they're cheap, uh, they work well over land distances. And one important thing is that the Ethernet standard allows for the local area network to operate completely independently of the internet. So you can have a local area network, which is an Ethernet network, with these switches here, which are cheap switches, uh, which can operate on that local area, managing the MAC addresses over a local area network, which is of course much smaller, and the, the lookup tables are gonna to have to be much smaller, many less devices than the entire internet. Uh, so it has a lot of advantages for local area networks and particularly if you want security and uh, you don't want every single uh, de device connected through to the internet. Maybe you have your whole LAN not connected to the internet at all. Um, internal uh, data um, uh, processing uh, units or, or company intranets, uh, these kinds of things are often on fully on ethernet connections with just uh, designated, finite number of designated gateways to the internet. Uh, so there's a lot of advantages in being able to segment your network and have what uh, the um, LAN connection operating over ethernet separated from the internet, which is a reason, another reason for having both the IP address and the MAC address. So if this video has given you more insights, I hope it's helped, uh, give it a thumbs up. It helps others to find the video. Um, subscribe to the channel for more videos and check out the webpage in the link below where there's a full categorized li list of all the videos on the channel, including PDF summary sheets of the videos.